We are very pleased and honored that our featured speaker today is Yael Eckstein, the Senior Vice President of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Born in Chicago, Yael studied at Torah Chesed Seminary in Israel, Queens College in New York, and the Hebrew University. She has degrees in Biblical and Jewish Studies and in Sociology. As Senior Vice President of the IFCJ, she oversees all programs and serves as the international spokesperson for the organization. In 2014, Ms. Eckstein was named one of Israel's 100 Most Influential Women by Makor Rishon. We are very honored and thank you, Elle, for agreeing to speak to us today. Thirteen years ago, I made Aliyah to Israel from Chicago. Although fulfillment of a dream, it was also something that I always said I would never do. After spending my seminary year in Israel during the Second Intifada trying to dodge terror attacks and being reminded of just how vulnerable we are in this tiny, beloved country, the words of the Song of Psalms summed up my feelings perfectly. A rose amongst thorns. This country that awakened my soul, defined my identity, and brought purpose and passion into my life was truly a rose amongst thorns. It's my destiny to live here, but if I'll ever fulfill my destiny is questionable, I would think to myself daily. I walked the holy streets of Jerusalem where my studies came to life, my history gathered meaning, and my soul finally was dancing. I knew I was home, but I didn't know if I could make the move. I so badly wanted to plant new roots in the holy soil of Israel, but you see, to me, it just looked too hard. Parents going to the supermarket separately in case a terror attack would strike while they were shopping. Saying prayers each time you step on a bus, not knowing if you would step off of it. Debating if meeting a friend for coffee at a local Jerusalem coffee shop constituted sakanat and fashot, putting yourself in danger. The people who live here are holy warrior angels, I would say to myself, and I'm just not sure that I'm one of them. I went back to America, studied in college, and tried to move on with my life. I started dating an Israeli man, and after almost three years, we decided to get married. Everything was perfect except for one thing. He always dreamed of moving back to Israel. This was God's way of never letting me escape my destiny. Yet still I tried. If you marry me, we're living in America, I told him. I bluntly said this to him, and eventually he agreed. We decided to establish our life in Highland Park, New Jersey. But Israel never stopped tugging at my heart. Each time I prayed the words, Uvenei Yerushalayim, Ir HaKodesh, Lord, open up the gates of Jerusalem, my heart would drop into my stomach. How do I pray these words and put meaning into them when for the first time in over 2,000 years, God has opened up the gates of Jerusalem? I do have the opportunity to go home, yet I'm not. One month after getting married, I told my husband that I was ready to move to Israel. Two years later, our first child was born in Jerusalem. The day I became a mother, everything changed. Suddenly, Israel didn't feel as dangerous as it once did. Finally, I understood how parents raise their children in this country that so many people call a war zone. Israel is the only country in the entire world who has a government and an army dedicated to one thing, protecting my family. It's the only country in the world when faced with the ultimatum to either give up the Jews or give up everyone, they will protect my children. They will go down fighting for me. There are many places in the world for Jews to live, but the truth is there's only one place for Jews to call home. And as we all know, this home was not only founded and built with sweat, but with blood. And the type of blood doesn't matter to those who seek to destroy us. Haredi, secular, native Israeli, French, Russian, Druze, Arab, Bedouin, Dru Druze, it doesn't matter, because terror does not differentiate. Here we stand surrounded by the names of 350 fallen, holy soldiers of Israel, of God, of tzedek, of righteousness, both the Jews and non-Jews, who have paid the ultimate price so that our home is never again destroyed. I am humbled 
I am awed, and truly, I am speechless. Anyone who has been to Israel and lived in Israel, even for 33 days, knows the feeling. When there's a terror attack and you quickly call everyone you know to make sure that they're okay. Once you hear that everyone is okay, you take a sigh of relief. But then the tightness in your chest, it just comes back again. It wasn't someone I know or love, but it's still my brother. There's a family who tried to call their loved ones on repeat following this terror attack, just like me, yet they listened breathlessly as that phone rang endlessly. And it's with those thoughts that every single time, including this morning, my tears fall. And I know that I'm not the only one. When one person dies by war, by terror, the entire country mourns. That's just one of the things that's so painfully beautiful about this country. Despite our differences, there is a divine string that ties us all together. A divine string that ties us together in spirit. And it's this divine connection which causes people to run towards a terror attack instead of away from it. It's this divine connection which inspires thousands of strangers to go to a Holocaust survivor's funeral who didn't have any friends or family. And it's this divine connection which makes our heart ache and break for every single name written on that wall. Israel is a rose amongst thorns. And these fallen heroes are the water and the sun in this divine garden. When one person is killed in Israel, Jews around the world mourn. Kol Yisrael arevim zelazeh. Yet we're living in very special times. Today, when one person dies in Israel, not only do the Jewish people mourn, but millions of non-Jews as well. In my work with the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, I have seen the passion, sincerity, and dedication that these people, Christians, have for the Jewish people's homeland. To me, it's an inspiration. For the first time in history, we are not alone. Israel has seen too much tragedy. From Naftali, Gilad, and Ayal, to Eitam, and Nama, Henk, and Zichonam, Libracha, the list is too long and too painful to go through. But let everyone be certain. For every single individual killed, for simply living on this land, this collective homeland of the Jewish people, our tears will never stop flowing. It's in their merit that people like me have the ability to choose whether we come back to Israel or not. And it's in their merit that Jews around the world in France, Turkey, Morocco, Ukraine, Yemen, knows that when it gets too dangerous to stay in the land of their birth, they can always return to the land of their soul. Today, we are adding three names to this list, Erez, Niot, and David, and I pray that this will be the end. We will never forget, yet let it be clear, we will also never despair. There is hope for your future, said the Lord, and your children will return to their land. Thank you, Yael.